Hi, it's Jason Cabot, diving into self-care, entrepreneurship, and family insights with Fancy Vargas. Yeah, thank you. So, Fancy, what do you, like, you, you've been an entrepreneur for a while. Tell us how you take care of yourself, like, follow, you know, physically, mentally, all that kind of stuff. What do you do to take care of yourself? Um, so, both physical and mental health, I love to hike. I haven't got to hike as often as I used to, and I'm trying to reprioritize that. But that helps me clear my mind, and of course, any physical activity is good for the body. So, you have any favorite hiking places? Uh, North Bend, um, but also Mount Rainier, Latches or Natchez Loop, um, which is in Mount Rainier, is really beautiful, covered in wildflowers, takes a few hours, like four different lakes my favorite hike and you go like go by yourself you have like a group of friends that go hiking with you sometimes i go uh with my friends and sometimes i go with my family and like how often do you go um again i need to go more often but maybe like every couple weeks okay yeah pretty regularly yeah i'd and like to go once a week is the ideal for me okay yeah and it, you have any other hobbies uh swimming okay yeah i love the ocean and i, I could swim for like three hours at a time oh wow yeah nice <laughs> nice you been like a lifelong swimmer, like since mm -hmm. you were a little kid. I'm pretty sure I was a mermaid in my <laughs> past life. <laughs> nice. Um, and you're a, you're a first generation immigrant. I am. So what does that mean? Always get confused. Like, does it mean like you came over from the from the country? Your parents came over. What does that mean first generation? So that first generation means that my parents were immigrants and we're the first people in our family to be born here in the okay. United States. I got it. And yeah. and what country do you come from? Um, my mom is from Panama and my dad's from Mexico. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um. You ever go back to those countries any once in a while? I have not, but we are planning to start going as a family, and I'm wanting to send my kids back once a year. I think that uh, them being so removed from um, our family's history has not done them any good, and it'd be good for them to learn perspective. Um, this is just a little too much entitlement these days with these kids. So. Yeah, but I think every generation says that. If you go back to the 1600s, they'll say, <laughs> that generation will say, our kids are spoiled. Right? Each that's, generation, that's the other, 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 other following generation, kids are spoiled. Or like, they didn't struggle like we did. But yeah. you work so hard, so they don't have to struggle like you. Yeah. And you get mad because they're not tough they're, like you. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, hypocritical a little bit, you know? Yeah, that's, that's a valid point. Yeah. yeah, I have that conversation with my daughter, my oldest daughter, a lot. And just telling her, like, I'm glad you didn't have to go through the things that I've gone through, but also you need to have some gratitude, which I feel often comes with perspective. Yeah. So when you have a life where you are being taken care of well, um, you don't really get that perspective outside of what you've experienced yourself. And you've been entrepreneur like a like a little while, while like how many years? Uh, it'll be four years in yeah. September is when I'm celebrating my business anniversary. And do you think you being an entrepreneur it has an advantage of you as far as raising your kids? Like your kids get to see like the like what you, what you do as an entrepreneur versus like working a regular nine to five job? Absolutely, because when I talk to my kids about what they aspire to be or what how they dream up their future, it's never a I'm gonna work at. It's always a well I'm gonna start this and I'm gonna do this. Actually, my son who's thirteen has already started his little entrepreneurship ways. Um, they have Chromebooks that are assigned to kids in school now, but the Chromebooks are locked so the kids can't access certain sites. Well, my son wanted to play Fortnite and he found out how to do the coding to unlock it and then started selling the codes at school. And I'm like, you know, I, yeah, I'm like, you know what? That was a really I'm, I'm good sure, idea. I'm, I'm sure the school would say it's unethical and moral. You're stealing something. I think that's, uh, that's like the hell of a hat. I'm like, son, like, that was a great plan. I mean, you shouldn't have done that because the rules are the rules for a reason. But can we learn to use your powers for good? Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like their mindset is definitely different because they've seen me um, like want to do things and create things in my mind and actually bring it to fruition. And they're like, OK, well, now I can think of cool things that other people haven't thought of and make it a reality. So what were you doing before you started your own company? Being a stay at home mother. Stay mother. OK. <laughs> yeah. So what made you decide, like, take this plunge to be an entrepreneur? Like what kick off that process? Um, so it actually. I always like to say when people ask me, like, how'd you start your business? Like, honestly, it started me. Uh, during the BLM movement, uh, I really noticed that my kids, my older two kids were struggling with all the messages that we're seeing in the media and the imagery. And I wanted to do something to help them navigate their feelings. So I put together 
um, a protest in Renton for families and kids. Uh, but I invited the kids out to lead the protest. So they led the chants. They shared their talents. They wrote songs about how they were feeling and about what was going on in our country, dances. Um, I created like a handmade quilt where I hand stitched a lot of the victims from police murders names on the quilt made out of a weighted blanket. Um, so it was just a really good time for us to gather in community and kind of help our children navigate this. And after that, the Arts Commission came downstairs and asked if I would put together an art walk for the city of Renton because they wanted to find a way to um, like acknowledge what was going on through art, but they wanted it to be community led. So I had no clue how to do that or how I was going to do that, but I just figured like, okay, well, if this is something that is a need, then I'll figure it out. Like I'll make it happen. So I Googled my way through the process and the city liaison, Jesse, she was great at helping me with that. Um, and the reception from the community and city council members was just really great throughout that whole process. And that's really how I got introduced to the first group of artists that I worked with. And then projects just started coming from that um, one after another. Eventually I was introduced to our community elders uh, an organization led by Dr. Linda Smith. She runs a nonprofit in Renton where their focus is to help with houselessness, uh, workforce equity, um, domestic violence victims, just all, all the good things doing in the community they've started. And through that process, I was asked to put together the uh, Juneteenth celebration for the city of Renton. And then, yeah, everything from there kind of grew. So it's all things that where I either saw a need um, or someone literally placed the opportunity in my lap and it just all kind of took off. So these, these are uh, things you made, like you did it by hand, sewing machine. Oh, the blank. Yes. Yeah. I made them by hand. Okay. Yeah. How long I don't know how to use that? the sewing machine. I've been sewing since maybe I was like six years old. So a long time. 